Hi guys, it's Jen here and welcome to Jen's Wild About Art. So today I'm going to do a painting of a giraffe for you. Um, so this is a giraffe, I took this photo myself at Melbourne Zoo, or Free Range Zoo actually, Werribee Free Range Zoo, um, where you go, they have them all just wandering around in um, giant paddocks. So they're literally free range, they've got hundreds and hundreds of acres to roam in and the giraffes are in with the zebra and the rhinoceros and antelope and it is just absolutely the most heavenly place to go and visit so yeah i got to take we got up right up close to this giraffe and i got to take a photo of him so um or i've actually got lots of video footage so this is a screenshot of one of my own videos so i'm just drawing in his basic outline now i'm not going to worry too much about detailing the background i'm sort of just going to do a mottly green just giving the effect that there could be trees behind him, it could be a foresty green behind him. So I'm just literally just roughing that this out in a different mixture of different greens. So I'm doing this with gouache today. Um, I'm usually pen, pencil or watercolour, um, but uh, I felt like trying something different again today. So gouache it is. And I like gouache equally as much as watercolour, because, but, but it has advantages. You can go over, if you make, make a mistake, you can actually go over it with a lighter colour, where if you accidentally fill in a spot on a watercolour with a dark colour that you don't want there, um, unless you've got white gouache or ink or something like that, you can't really make it white again because your white's your paper. But with this, you can go over pretty much any colour and, and re-whiten areas if you lose any. So yeah, very, very handy. So as you can see now, I'm just filling in the giraffe spots with uh, yellow ochre. So I'm just doing a, a wash of yellow ochre. Um, I do do it this bit quite watery. You shouldn't have to mix too much water with gouache because, you know, just enough to get it flowing. And I've got like a, a watercolour palette with my gouache in it. So it, it does dry out into, into like cakes. Um, so I re-wet it before I use it again. Um, and I just find it just convenient because I can just pick up the whole palette. I've got all my colours there and I'm done. So it's ready to go. So I just wet it quite heavily, but then I don't need to add a lot of water extra afterwards. So as you can see now, I'm going over the top again and I'm just grabbing my colour chart so I can let you know what colour I'm using. So yeah, I went over the first bit with yellow ochre and now I'm using a bit of yellow ochre and I've added a little bit of uh, white white gouache white to it just to lighten it just a couple of shades and i take that all around the lighter areas of his fur and down his legs and now i'm going in and i'm just building up values so building up tones and values so now i'm adding um a little bit of burnt umber to the darkest areas because he does He's sort of shaded where he's standing in the, in the picture. So I, I um, he's got quite dark on his back, quite dark shadows up high on his back. And yeah, and different, like around his hips, he's darker. And as you can see, as I go through this, I do change um, my mind a couple of times and lighten up areas here and there. But that's the beauty of gouache. You can lighten things up. If you go too dark, you can go, oh, it looks too heavy. Oh, I'll just add a bit of white or add a, make, change the tone of fraction and I can readjust it. So now I'm going in with a bit more yellow ochre and just adding that into some areas. And now a bit of, bit of gouache. I did add a little bit of yellow ochre in it, but you can't really see it. Um, so I will go back and soften that because it's way too white. So I'll add a bit more actually natural sienna to it to change that so it's not so bright white, just like that. And then I can still move it around a little bit. Um, so now I'm adding a bit of Van Dyke brown to the top parts of his spots on his back, on his elbows, and anywhere that he's absolutely at his darkest, down the back of his legs. So that just gives the detail just around those darkest areas. Pop his little mane in, because they do have a little standy uppy mane on the backs of their necks that goes down onto their shoulder. And under his chin's quite dark, so I darken that up. And now I'm going back in with a little bit of natural sienna just to deepen up those spots on the underneath of his neck and the front of his leg. And now I'm adding a bit, I'm gonna mottle the background and just make it a bit less blotchy. So I'm adding, I've mixed up a bit of olive green and a bit of white and a little bit of uh, cad yellow. And I'm just gonna vary the background a bit more. And it, it does, when it dries, it actually, 
does give a really lovely effect. So I'm just doing the green under his feet. So for that, I used uh, olive green and a bit of lemon yellow because I'm limited on the colours that I actually have in my palette, in my, in my gouache palette. And I'm using Sennelia gouache, by the way. I absolutely love it for animals. It's just wonderful stuff. I am a, I do, I am a fan of Sennelia, must admit. Not sponsored, have to say that, not sponsored. I bought it all myself. But, um, yeah, love my Sennelia gouache. So now I'm adding a little bit, I mixed up a green with a bit of yellow, a bit of cobalt, just to vary the greens in the grass underneath him. So now, as you can see, like I said before, I'm going back in, I've mixed up a brownie grey that I'm taking down the, shad the the lighter sides of his neck. It's just lightening up, giving him some variation in the colour of his fur. Take that down his legs, around his chest. Oh, that's a bit white there. So I go back and I add a little bit more of a sienna to that. His belly's quite white, so I've lightened that right up. And I've got to do a bit more detail around his face. He's got quite white under his eye and he's got white trim around his shoulder. So I pop that in. So now I'm going in with a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of red brown and adding another layer to the to the spots, not covering them completely, just sort of uh, sort of just yeah, washing it around, just having so that what like, you'll see some of the spots have red brown, dark brown, burnt umber. Um, they're, they're not all one just solid color brown they're all mixtures of browns so now I'm just defining final details here and there I pop his eye in pop the signature on take the tape off and we're done so I hope you enjoyed this video it was fun using gouache again um, I'd love it if you click like and subscribe uh, yeah and if you click on the bell icon you'll get notified when I release my next videos which I do three times a week and now I live stream on a Saturday morning Australia time so I'd love you come along and have a watch anyway have an awesome day guys and I shall catch you next video okie doke bye